Today we're running through a fantasy football draft that I just completed. You can look at it as a mock draft. You can look at it as a real draft. It was $3 entry on underdog, and I smoked it. Absolutely rolled it up, put it in my pipe, and smoked it. All right? I want to walk through them. because I felt like I got value at most of the picks that I made. I honestly might have timed out on one or two of them. But regardless, I want to talk through 18 of these players because there's 18 rounds in an underdog draft. And we do a lot of uh, drafting throughout the summer. We do like three or four of the drafts on our channel. If you are not subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll make sure that you are fully prepped, locked and loaded for your fantasy draft coming up in August and September. Make sure you got notifications turned on because when we do live streams, you will get notified and you can come draft with us. Now, this was a draft that I did with, I believe, people within the Discord on underdog. So again, you can draft with us if you're on our Discord, if you are subscribed to the channel, etc. Now we do a lot of these live streams and a lot of them are longer, right? Like if you're in the actual draft lobby with us and you're on the live streams and stuff, they're like hour long, an hour, five minutes, whatever. So we're kind of like hanging out, chopping it up. But sometimes not everybody wants to hang out for the entire live stream. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do one of these a week instead covering underdog where I do the draft and then I go back and I break down the picks that I had in my thought process throughout it and kind of rip through the 18 picks that I had. And that way I feel like you get more of an in-depth look on each player that I like or dislike. So that being said, you can let me know whether or not you like or dislike this style of video. And then we could do one stream within the office with the other guys in the office. We could do one live stream where it's just me. And then I could do one breakdown video if you'd like. Y'all let me know in the comments whether or not you like this style of video. It's going to be quicker pace. I think it'll be much shorter, but hopefully value packed, action packed, shirts tucked, packed. Yeah. More importantly, traps flexed, packed. So we'll jump over here to the draft board. I had the fifth overall pick. I took Tyreek Hill with the fifth pick. And I think this draft is kind of cool because I feel like it played itself out a little bit more what family and friends leagues will probably do where you had C-Mac at the two, Bijan Robinson at the three. Uh, those types of leagues, I feel like go a lot more running back heavy, um, especially like the popularity of running backs in fantasy football over the last couple of years, etc. So I was pretty excited to get Tyreek Hill at number five. Uh, in love with Tyreek Hill, in love with the Miami Dolphins offense overall. I go very in depth in them in tomorrow's video. So if you want to hear about Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and Tua, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But Tyreek Hill just came off 170 target season. He's already talking about how he wants to break 2,000 yards. And to be honest with you, combine him with Jalen Waddle. Wouldn't be surprised if they just have a target share of upwards of 58%. They didn't add any receivers, tight ends, running backs of consequence that are going to have high target number totals, which means more passes funneled to the best playmakers in the world and there are two of them on miami in tyree kill and jalen waddle so absolutely love tyree kill here wouldn't have been mad with jamar chase obviously wouldn't have been mad with cooper cup at the five there either we huddle back around to t higgins here at the two eights now i want to say i might have actually auto picked this one which is not a good look but i'm fine with t higgins here i think you can make the argument back and forth where he's kind of like a low ceiling type of player in the cincinnati offense because jamar chase is the one and he statistically continues to put up the same amount of points each year right like 1100 yards eight touchdowns but my argument would be joe burrow's eventually going to have that 40 45 passing touchdown year and who's probably going to benefit from that obviously jamar chase but also t higgins and i think we're seeing the convulgence of the offense overall mixon is fine he's a cool runner but Samaji P runs out of there so pass catching going to the running back question mark Hayden Hurst out of there kind of a question mark Tyler Boyd obviously getting older and becoming less and less of a piece of that offense again like Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill we could see this offense really convulge into hitting 58 percent of the passes which we love Justin Fields at the 3-5 even in a one quarterback league I, I, I it's crazy to me that you can get Justin Fields here with all the quarterback hype because he's another player that I talk about in tomorrow's video, which are legitimately five players that I think will win fantasy leagues uh, this upcoming year. It feels like we're getting to redo Jalen Hurts again this year at a discount and people are still kind of whiffing on Justin Fields being there. Justin Fields and Lamar Jackson were the only two players in fantasy last year <coughs> at the quarterback position to have multi 40 point fantasy games from week six on he scored a touchdown and had 60 rushing yards or more in six of 10 games not or but and justin fields is going to go nutty this year better weapons dj moore tyler scott etc and a much better offensive line like he did all that last year quarterback five and points per game with the worst personnel around him so justin fields at the three and underdog drafts right now 
feels beautiful. You can, I've seen him go later. I've seen him go in the fourth. I've seen him go almost near the turn uh, into the fourth, fifth round. So that is beautiful to me. I'll be taking Justin Fields in the third, fourth as much as I possibly can. If you want to draft with us, again, this is on Underdog Fantasy. The link to download the app will be in the description. And if it's your first time playing on there, when you deposit, use promo code E. B D, but you will be able to uh, first of all to let us know that we sent you and you'll probably get into the drafts with me secondly they'll hit you with a 100 percent deposit match so if you throw ten dollars down use the code you'll have 20 which means you could do six of these drafts over the next month or so and you'll be super prepared for your fantasy season now at this point i'm kind of building up a zero rb roster right and i probably need to hit on higher upside or just good running backs that I know will get me points, right? And here, I don't really want to go as risky, where I feel like some of the guys in this range are risky. You see DeAndre Swift go around later. Uh, Those aren't the guys I'm typically trying to nail when I'm going zero RB builds, which is contrary to what a lot of people say. I feel like they go wide receiver heavy and then just try to like go high upside swings on running backs. I would rather have safe guys that I know will get me eight to 10 points a game. I think Walker's better than that. I think Walker was a phenomenal runner as a rookie. Sure, they bring in Zach Charbonnet, who will get some passing work, who will get some goal line work and whatnot. But I think Walker is still going to end up putting up 11 to 1,200 yards from scrimmage, still have eight touchdowns, won't have the ceiling of being a top five back. We probably thought he could have been without Charbonnet there, but still an offense that's on the rise. It's going to be really, really good, have a ton of scoring opportunities. So even if he's not getting 80% of the goal line work, which I believe he saw every single goal line carry from week five on last year, uh, so there's a good chance he still does get a lot of the goal line work. Even if he doesn't, I think there will be enough that you're feeling pretty good about the work that he does get there. After Kenneth Walker, the 4-8, I was like kind of going back and forth on, do I want to grab a tight end here? We had TJ Hawkinson go off at the 5-3, and then I had Kittle. I've been going back and forth on Kittle, but the more I think about Kittle, the more I want him. Because I think with the tight end position, you're just not going to find a lot of players that give you consistency at the position. So what I'm kind of looking for is like, what can you do that breaks the game on a weekly basis? And I was looking at some numbers and two things I took away. In the seven starts that Brock Purdy had, George Kittle scored seven touchdowns. So he's a clear red zone weapon there. And that will be great for Kittle if Purdy is the quarterback. Secondly, I look back historically. And since 1970 or 80, either 1970 or 80, George Kittle has three of the highest single game receiving yardage totals for tight ends of the top nine. So since 1980 or 70, I forget fucking which one, whatever, sue me. George Kittle has three of the top nine single game highest receiving yardage totals for tight ends. That is what he offers your team on any given week, and he'll probably get back on there at least once this year. It's kind of like the Justin Fields where it's like, listen, everyone wants consistency, but at the end of the year, you're happy if the guy ends up as a top five guy at the position. You don't pick or choose when the points come, and it's very hard to find consistency at tight end, but we know for damn fucking sure that he's going to put up some balloon type games. So I'm getting more and more in love with George Kittle because we know just how dominant he is as a player when he stays healthy. So fifth round George Kittle, I really like the fact that you can get a guy with that kind of upside this late in draft. Same thing with Joe Mixon at the 6'8". Like, I'm not in love with the player, and he might fucking very well be absolutely cooked here. But he's the only he's the only player out there in Cincinnati in the backfield besides some fifth-round, day-three-type beats. Uh, Joe Mixon's probably going to score another 10 touchdowns here and get 270 carries. So at the end of the sixth round, give me all of that. And these are all paid drafts. You have to pay at least $3 to get into them. So this ADP is not fucking around. There's, there ain't no jokes. It's in a goddamn comedy club out here. People are taking it seriously. So mixing out the 6-8 is something that's, I don't want to say expected, but it can absolutely happen because it just did happen, all right? And it can happen to you if you come draft with us on Underdog. Promo code BDG. Uh, I took Deontay Johnson at the 7-5. I just feel like he's still, I'm not in love with the passing offense in Pittsburgh, but I still feel like he's the clear number one here. And George Pickens went, what, eight picks earlier than that? Deontay Johnson's still a fantastic separator. He's still a guy who earns a ton of targets, especially with Pickett, who's not like chucking the ball downfield much. I'm not like overly excited about him. I don't think the ceiling is super high, but I still think he can get 130, 140 targets. And in the seventh round, I'm very much okay with that. Rather would have had Chris Godwin there, uh, who went one pick earlier, but I'll take Deontay Johnson at the 7 5. Jahan Dotson, one of the most talented second year receivers in the league right now at the 8 8. I've been scooping as much Jahan Dotson in the eighth, ninth round as I possibly humanly can i'm excited for sam howell to be the quarterback there man and they need other guys to catch passes there so Jahan dotson was one of the most impressive rookies last year let's not forget he was the 16th overall pick all right and then this next pick's kind of interesting i took zach charbonnet at the 9-5 now in best ball which is what this is and you can get zach charbonnet in the 9th 10th 11th round something absolutely worth looking into maybe not pulling the trigger on it but look through the scope and see how clear the shot is if one of them gets injured 
The other one probably goes immediately into a three-down workhorse role in a really good offense. Wouldn't put it behind Charbonnet to have standalone value either way in this offense. So uh, this was one of my first draft picks of Zach Charbonnet this offseason. And this kind of feels like I might have timed out on this pick as well because I probably would have taken Brian Robinson over him. I probably would have taken Rashad Bateman over him. But that's either here nor here. This next one was absolutely a timeout. Juju at the 10-8. Hate his ass. Oh, I don't want any part of him on my team, but I guess someone in New England has to get uh, targets over there. But Antonio Gibson, we go back to Washington, and I think this offense, again, could be kind of condensed. John Dotson, Terry McLaurin, and then whatever happens in the backfield. I like Gibson as a player who I think is super underrated right now in the way that they're going to use him. He was a fantastic pass catching back last year. Like his stats as a pass catcher were really, 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 really impressive. And I think that's kind of going under the radar because the only back that they added was Chris Rodriguez out of Kentucky, who is not a pass catcher. Gibson's going to have that third down role again with J.D. McKissick obviously not there. I think his pass catching has a ton of upside. I don't think any of the other runners like Brian Robinson and Chris Rodriguez, neither of them are that impressive on the ground. So I wouldn't be surprised if Gibson is a little bit more utilized on the ground. So I'm excited to, to, to grab Gibson in the 11th, 12th of most of my drafts. I also like Jay, Zay Jones. I think he's just a fucking good ball player at his price that will produce and put up, you know, 700 yards, six touchdowns in an offense that's clearly on the rise. Yes, they obviously brought in Calvin Ridley. I don't expect Zay Jones to pull up what he did last year, but down here, he's going to get targets. He's going to have a lot of red zone scoring opportunities, and we love to see it. Matt Stafford as my QB2 down here at the 13-5. I feel like he continues to just like fall down draft boards, but he continues to get reports coming out of camp that he looks good. He looks clean. And if him and Cooper Cup are on the field together, he's going to have plenty of good weeks. So as long as his back doesn't fucking break in half, I'm in on, on Matt Stafford down here at the 13th, 14th round. He's someone who statistically just continues to put up like huge numbers. Their defense is bad. They're going to have to throw the ball a ton. They're not going to really be able to rely on their run game as it stands right now. So I think Stafford will have high volume to maybe not high efficiency, but you want to give me fucking 48 pass attempts a game. Cool. Matt Stafford's going to rip. Right after him, we have Josh Downs, who's very rarely getting talked about in Indy. We hear about Michael Pittman. We hear about Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, and Alec Pierce. But Josh Downs, I love this kid. I probably could have waited another round to grab him, but we wanted another rookie down here at Tank Bigsby. But Josh Downs is a guy who brings something to the offense as a slot wide receiver, as an explosive playmaker that they don't really have in that offense because Pittman's like a possession guy. Alec Pierce is a downfield threat. Josh Downs is a really explosive slot wide receiver that I feel like can contribute right away. So I love Josh Downs. Tank Bigsby, I think he's wildly underrated. I think he's going to force a committee with him and ETN ASAP. I think Isaiah Hodgins is a talented wide receiver who's just good at ball. I, I don't really know what to make of the Giants wide receiver core because we hear reports of like Paris Campbell's the guy. We also have Wondell Robinson coming back. We have Jalen Hyatt as a third round pick who's getting like third string run. Uh, they have a lot of stuff just up in the air right now, but I liked what I saw out of Isaiah Hodgins at the end of last year. And I think he's a good ball player. Same thing with Tanks Big, who I took the round before. I think Tank Bigby is kind of like a thunder to ETN's lightning. Like I like ETN a lot. Super talented back, but Bigsby He's going to catch some passes. Bigsby's probably going to be utilized on the goal line a little bit. A little bit lower on ETN than consensus. A little bit higher on Tank Bigsby than consensus. Hayden Hurst at the 17-5 feels a little bit weird, too, because... Carolina signed him to like a not not a super lucrative deal, but he's been pretty good and he's going to step right in there as a starter and he's not like a rookie. Right? Like I like these rounds down here where you can get rookie tight ends like Michael Mayer went at 14-3, Laporta at 15-1, 16-12. So you're getting guys that I think will step into like a starting role immediately, but Hayden Hurst is a veteran who will step onto the field and probably be able to produce immediately, right? These other rookies might take eight weeks to like really get comfortable and produce, but Hayden Hurst down here at 17-5 is the starting tight end in an offense with Bryce Young, the number one overall pick, and there's complete targets up for grabs there because they just basically added a bunch of new players and Mingo and Adam Thielen and, and Miles Sanders and Bryce Young. There's nothing really concrete there. And Hayden Hurst could lead Carolina in maybe not targets, but he'll, he'll be up there. So I like Hayden Hurst. I also like Trey McBride, man. Zach Ertz coming back from the ACL tear. Trey McBride was the first tight end picked in the NFL draft last year. And if they're like in rebuilding mode in Arizona, which it looks like they are, Trey McBride could very much be a part of their future plans. Okay, so they don't have a lot of weapons there either outside of Hollywood Brown, realistically. So I think Trey McBride's going to be pretty involved in this offense. So in these tight in these best ball builds, I like to grab three tight ends. I like to grab two of them late for sure, because I think you get a lot of options of players who will probably step right in and be starters in their offense. So they might not put up big numbers, but you're just looking for a little something, you know? So that's the team. We'll run through it real quick. Tyree Kill, T. Higgins, Justin Fields, Kenneth Walker, George Kittle, Joe Mixon, Deontay Johnson, Jahan Dotson, Zach Charbonnet, Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Gibson, Zay Jones, Matt Stafford, Josh Downs, Tank Bigsby, Isaiah Hodgins, Hayden Hurst, Trey McBrizzy. We are always drafting on underdog. It's the best platform to use bar none, hands down, hands tied, locked up, 
bed post fucking type beat underdog. Get on there. Use promo code BDG. These are all half PPR leagues, how I play all my home leagues. Uh, but more importantly, you can draft with us and you could be in the live stream. So go sign up on underdog with our code. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn notifications on so you know when we go live for the streams. And let me know if you like this style of video or you like the longer ones better. I'll still be doing both kinds of them, but I'd like to know if you want me to mix stuff like this into it. All right. I love you. I'm out of here.